Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're checking out the updates to Pro EQ 3. We've done videos on Pro EQ and Pro EQ 2 with its updates. Now we're back again with version 6 and Pro EQ 3. There's some major improvements here, so let's dive straight in and take a look at what they are. All right, so here we are inside of our session. It's just something I'm working on, doesn't matter. What really we're looking at is Pro EQ 3 and at surface level, it does look the same as Pro EQ 2 from PreSonus, but there are some differences. First, the linear low cut bands have changed slightly. There's 20 hertz, 50 hertz, and 80 hertz now, and this varies ever so slightly from version 2 with just different cutoff starting frequencies. It's not a huge deal, but Again, just something to keep in mind. Here's something that's new though. When we activate it, and I'm just gonna put this to 80 so we can see it easier, we can see the slope of this linear low cut happening. But this is a little drastic for me. I don't want it as drastic. What I can do is come down to soft and it eases the curve of the linear low cut so that we're not doing as drastic of cuts to our low end. So the soft button changes the Q of the linear low cut. Very similar kind of way, if we turn this off and turn the standard low cut on, it's currently almost the same as what we were seeing. And we're at 75 here with a 12 dB per octave slope. We can make this more aggressive if we click on this and we can go to 48 and almost brick wall all of our low end. Or we can go all the way up to 6 dB. This is something that we've seen in Pro EQ before. Back to our linear low cut, with this soft button engaged, it's closer to the 12 dB per octave kind of slope. And with this disengaged, it's actually much heavier. It's closer to a 36 dB per octave kind of linear low cut. So play around with this when you're working on cutting your lows. Now let's get into our main five bands. And these are the ones we're really gonna concentrate on because they have some new buttons going on here. There's a D and an S. Let's start with S. S stands for, like we see in our channels, solo. So on any one of these, and let's turn the linear low cut off because we don't need it. On any one of the five main bands, you can solo the band so you can really dial in the EQ range you're looking for and then take it out of solo and make the boost or cut that you're actually looking to do. So right now I have Pro EQ on a drum set. If I needed to kind of just get rid of some boxiness, I could go to my low mid frequency, solo this out, take my frequency selector, slide it around, and just find where my boxiness may be in these drums. Let's say it's at this 340 region. Take it out of solo, and then I can either boost or cut, and because this is boxiness, I probably don't want it, I can make my cut right here, and I've found exactly where I want to be. I don't have to do the old trick of making a real narrow cue, boosting way up, sweeping around, and finding something that I don't like. When we do that method, you're going to sweep around and you go, man, I hate that, man, I hate that, man, I hate that. And you're going to get so many different little notches because you're boosting and you're making your ear excited to these frequencies you don't like. Where if we put everything back to normal and you go into solo, now you can sweep around with the frequency knob and find the problematic areas. Another thing is the slope of the solo follows the cue. So you can have this really narrow, but then let's say I want a cue of two on the low mids. I can now find that with my solo, take solo out, and then just do the same cue width of two on that same EQ band. And I know exactly the area that I'm affecting. Now let's talk about the D button. The D button, turns this into a dynamic band. So in Pro EQ 3, you have five dynamic EQ bands available to you. And that's from your low frequency all the way up to your high frequency and the three mid frequencies in between. As soon as you hit the D button, you'll see that the user interface expands and we now see range and threshold. Range is exactly what you think. It's how far in one direction, either boost or cut, you're going to go. And yes, with dynamic EQ, you can have boosts or cuts, and you can kind of counter them as well, but we'll get into that in a bit. So 
we'll continue working with our low mid frequency here. If I was gonna take the range and increase this, you can see at my target frequency, which is reset to 500, I now have an 11 dB range for this EQ band. So anything that's happening in here, if it's triggering it enough, it's going to have the capabilities of going up to 11 dB of gain. And how do we know what kinds of things are going to excite this dynamic band? That's where threshold comes in. With threshold, it's similar to how a compressor threshold works, but almost in the opposite direction. I wanna turn this down and find the sweet spot of my source material to make the dynamic band start being dynamic. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When I hit play, you're gonna hear a drum set and I'm gonna kind of take this out. And what I really wanna do is I want my snare to have a little extra pop, but I don't want it to really affect anything else that's going on on these drums, which I am gonna solo out. So I just wanna find the fundamental of my snare, which is gonna be in the 200 Hertz kind of range. And I really just wanna bring out some of the beef of it only when it hits. And I don't want anything else to affect this EQ and make it kind of dance up. So I do wanna have some extra body. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase my range. And let's go ahead with a range of seven. This is a very heavy kind of EQ move here. And I know I'm gonna be down in the 200 area, so let's just go with 210. That's roughly where we're going. I am gonna narrow up my Q to about two, just to really make sure that I'm only gonna be concentrating on the body of the snare. Now when I hit play, I'm just gonna dial in the threshold so that when the snare hits, I get a nice little bump, and that's the only thing that's going to affect this band. Listen. So just like that, I very quickly dialed in the threshold and only when the snare is hitting are we getting a nice bump of about 7 dB in the fundamental of the snare. It adds a lot more. So I have the body and the kick drum or the cymbals, they're not affecting this. And really this is only happening when the snare hits because we've dialed it in. Let's do the same thing with the low frequency and we'll find the fundamental of our kick. I'm thinking it's about 80, and I wanna do a nice little bump here. I'm gonna leave kind of a wide cue because I do want some nice beef from the kick drum. But here we go, here, let's take another listen and dial in some kick beef. Once again, with some minor modifications and fine tuning, we can get just some extra thump and some real low push from our kick drum. And you can continue to do this. Maybe you want your high frequencies to be dynamic and I am gonna use a shelf so I can actually add some nice sparkle up on top but also increase the range so we have just general sparkle on the top but if a crash symbol hits, we get a little extra and we can just dial that in with the threshold. So what we've done because of the way that the mix is right now, we're actually just adding some extra presence and top end to our snare. Whenever the snare was hitting, the dynamic band of the high frequency was just adding some extra top end of our snare. And now it's actually cutting through a little bit more. And we did twofold here with our EQ. We used just our general boost and gave ourselves about four dB of boost. And with the dynamic band engaged, we're just getting some extra sparkle from our snare when it hits. 
So there it is, that's Pro EQ3 with some really great added features. Being able to solo bands, having dynamic EQ built into a stock EQ. This is something that you don't really see from other DAWs. Yes, it's probably out there, but to have it here inside Studio One and not need a third-party plugin, this is really, really handy for every user that's out there. Be gentle with it, especially if you're starting out because it can get a little crazy, but also have some fun, learn some stuff, and then add in this sparkle or thump or whatever you need to. You can also go negative. We didn't really do that in our examples today, but you can reduce sounds as well. So this is a good little de -er, but there's a plugin for that now. We'll get into that in another video. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. If you want to join the community, ask about mixing or lesson information, join the Discord. There's a link down in the description. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.